Uh, I thought I'd do a video rather than just writing stuff down this month. Um, I thought it might be quite interesting to talk a bit about what it takes to write a book in the pandemic when you don't have access to the British Library. Because uh, for my last book, uh, for The Magic of Terry Pratchett, I spent hours and hours in the British Library. Uh, they have ac had access to everything, old newspapers, old magazines and every book pretty much ever published in the UK. And that's really, really useful when you're writing a non-fiction book. I didn't have access to that. And because I'm writing a book about Mark Bowen and David Bowie and needed to read an awful lot of interviews with them, I was really relying on being able to get all of those old melody makers and enemies and all that sort of thing. So what I've ended up having to do is spend a small fucking fortune on books. And I thought I'd take you through some of the stuff I've got and uh, and the kind of things you kind of have to look for and the different avenues it takes you down. So this is my shelf of Bowie and Bolan, uh, overlooked by David and Mark themselves, um, who, uh, while I'm writing, they, they keep an eye on me. I like to think that every night, David opens his eyes and Mark closes his. That's, uh, and the, like, never the two can be awake at the same time. That's my theory. Anyway, I've organised this, so I like, I like how I've done it. So it starts at the Bowie end. Um, there are low, There are so many books about David Bowie. There are probably more books about David Bowie than almost any other musician I can think of. Less maybe Elvis and the Beatles. Um, he's an extremely easy artist to write about. There's lots to be involved with. Um, so there's, there's frankly fucking loads. Um, the most important ones though are... Uh, there's this, Bowie on Bowie, which is just a selection of interviews. Um, and that's just useful to have. Every interview you read with somebody you're writing about is useful. You can pick up one fact about them that you didn't already know. It's useful. One fact about their childhood, one fact about their life, their interests, the way they see the world. Just one thing in an interview makes that interview worthwhile. More interesting, uh, any day now, any, any Bowie fan will tell you that this is really essential. It's literally day by day what Bowie was doing between 1947 and 1974, which is pretty much the period I'm covering. I'm, I'm going up to 77 when, when Mark died, but it's it's a fucking treasure trove. I love this book. Uh, it's really, really good, really useful, really interesting, um, and an absolute dream for me. Uh, there's actually like three other versions of this by different writers. Um, there's one called Golden Years. It's pretty much the same thing. Most of that's online, actually, like goldenyears.com, I think. And another one that you can get on Amazon by a guy called Patrick Lemieux, um, which is a bit more low rent, but they all pretty much do the same thing. And it's just genuinely really useful. Uh, but the most useful of the Bowie books, actually, are, um, are these three. Because these three are all contemporary. Um, the David Bowie story by George Tremlett, uh, this was published in 74 originally, this, this edition 76. Um, this is the first book that was ever written about David Bowie. So what's interesting about this is that you're getting a complete, like a complete contemporary view. It's written by somebody at the time, and that's really, really interesting. And I am, um, it's been really, really useful because it gets you into the mindset of the time. Um, you know, this was written by somebody who, what 1974, hadn't heard Young Americans yet, like hadn't heard Heroes yet. That's, and then. On a similar note, these two, Stardust, The Life and Times of David Bowie by Tony Zanetta and Henry Edwards. Tony Zanetta worked for Main Man. He was known as Z because everyone who worked for Main Man was called Tony. So uh, they gave some of them nicknames. Um, but he worked with Tony DeFries uh, at, at Main Man. And this is uh, his story, his version of Bowie. This was published in the late 80s. So again, this is a version of David Bowie where written at a point where his career was kind of grinding to a halt. Um, so you've got that contemporary perspective there, and obviously this is written by somebody who knew him, someone who was there through the glam years, through the 70s, through the main man years. Um, it's got quite a trashy tone, but I quite like that. Uh, if you've ever seen Velvet Goldmine, Velvet, this is one of the books they based Velvet Goldmine on, this and um, Angie Bowie's biography, which is the trashiest book I've ever read. Um, I feel really sorry for Duncan Jones. Like, that book has a description of the orgasm she had when he was conceived. That's not something anyone ever wants to know about. Um, and then this is the, this was brilliant. Um, the Pitt Report. Ken Pitt was Bowie's manager in the 1960s. Um, this also came out in the late 80s. 
and this is invaluable because it's first hand. And the 60s is a genuinely fascinating Bowie era. It's the era that people don't really concentrate on. His music is odd. Uh, it's somebody trying to get famous by any means necessary, I think. It's when he first met Mark Bolan. So, um, you know, for, for the Bowie scholar, this one's absolutely essential. Um, and then we move on to the Mark section. <laughs> and there are not as many Bolan biographies. Um, there's the best one I've actually got on my iPad, by Mark, which is by Mark Patris, uh, a 20th century boy. That one's really good. But the one I, will sh I, I wanted to show you is this, which is beautiful. Uh, I found this in the second hand shop. Um, this is a tribute to Mark Byron that was uh, published in 19, I think, 77, more or less. Uh, yeah. And it's got a lot of right. It was, yeah, published. 78, so the year after he died, and dedicated to Roland, put together by fans, put together by fans, um, it starts off with them getting somebody to do Boland's star chart, and to do a, a sort of astronom, uh, his, um, to do, to, they gave him the time and date of his birth, and the location of his birth, and they got an astrologer to write out his what they thought about his personality, and they didn't tell him who he was or that he was dead. So it starts off with that, which is very fucking Mark Bowler. <laughs> um, uh, and it's beautiful. It's just loads of quite. It's entirely made up of quotes from people who knew and worked with him. Um, the events are discussed in chronological order. Really, really useful. June Bolan, um, like Steve Curry. Uh, it, it's brilliant. My favorite Ringo Starr. My favorite thing about this which I'm going to get close to show you, is if you go to the bag. This is a second-hand copy. Somebody has written, I love you, Mark, and then someone else has written, no, you don't, I do. <laughs> this is Mark Bolan here. I would like to wish you all a super, fun, super funky Christmas and a golden new year. Yeah, baby, baby, I was born to boogie. Um, Amazing. That's a little. Um, Bolan fans are obsessive. Bolan fans are proper obsessives, and it's a little insight into them. So yeah, uh, there aren't as many good Bolan books. There's a couple of really good ones. Um, this was written about Steve Took, who is in T Tyrannosaurus Rex in the in the 1960s. And then we get into the related to Mark Bolan, Eric Hall, and uh, the pop 60s pop star Helen Shapiro lived. Uh, and grew up with him when he was a kid, so there's a lot of stuff there. Simon Napier Bell managed him in the 60s, there's a couple of good books by him. Scandalous writer, but very entertaining. Um, John Peel was a friend of both Bowie and Bolan, so this is a complete record of Peel sessions. I've got John Peel's autobiography. And then we get into the stuff that's a bit more interesting, because when you're writing a book like this, it takes you off in lots of different directions. So, Bolan and Bowie were both mods. So here is a book on mods. Um, I've got the sociology classic, Subculture the Meaning of Style by Dick Hedvidge, which is just when you're talking about subcultures, like there were mods, they were both like hippies. Um, this is really, really invaluable, it's really useful. Um, queer theory. I've got a book on queer art. Um, th these are like, these are proper, this is um, Queer Noises by John Gill. These are academic books, which is really um, useful for me. Uh, it gives you a grounding in this stuff, it's theory. Um, Angie Bowie has written two books about queer theory. Lipstick Legends and The Pocket Book of Bisexuality. Um, Angie is an interesting figure. She's clearly a pain in the arse, but she is very outspoken, very intelligent, and she has been openly queer since she was a schoolgirl. So. Um, her perspective on this sort of thing is really interesting and the kind of the part of Bowie's life where he was playing with gender and playing with sexuality Angie was absolutely key to that so having her perspective then we go into the general glam section <laughs> um, this book is this is really good and it's kind of annoying Simon Reynolds is uh, shock and awe because I read this um, quite recently uh, after I've been working on the book for about six months and a lot of what I wanted to say is in this. 
<laughs> and I was really livid. So, um, but it actually gives me different directions to jump off from. So, you know, uh, Arts Labs in the 1960s, Bowie ran an arts lab, Bowen was very involved in the mid-60s scene, this is like a whole 60s section. Sid Barrett's autobiography, he was wound up in both of their lives, Mark, um, June Boland, Mark's wife, ran out with Sid Barrett, uh, Bowie idolised him, um, to, basically Sid Barrett is one of the reasons Bowie sang in his own accent, um, Sid Barrett and Tony Newley. Um, these are all books about 60s counterculture, uh, Days in the Life is pretty much the essential book about 60s counterculture, it's an entire oral history of the 1960s. Um, really, really interesting. And then you get into the general music stuff. Um, I wanted to say, talk about this one. If you know anything about music journalism, um, Nick Cohen was basically the first music journalist. Uh, he wrote this book in the late 60s, A What Bop Baloo Bop A Lot Bamboo, as a kind of, here is what has happened in pop music up to this point. Uh, this is the first serious book anyone ever wrote about pop music or rock music. Uh, I got this copy when I was 17 <laughs> in 1998. Um, and I think it's one of the best books about music ever written. Uh, but again, it's got that complete contemporary vibe. Um, and then at the end here, books about London, which is really useful. We've got Memories of Bromley. Um, Bowie obviously grew up in Bromley. East End Neighbourhoods, Bolan lived in the East End just down the road from me. Um, this is a contemporary guide to Carnaby Street, to 1967 Carnaby Street, all the streets and all the shops you could find there, um, where both of them spent an awful lot of time. Um, and then just down the road from Carnaby Street, you had Covent Garden, uh, where Joe Boyd ran the UFO club. Um, so yeah, it all ties together. So um, yeah, that's just some of it. I mean, I've got loads more. I've got like 30 other books on my iPad. <laughs> um, and then there's everything available on the internet. So uh, I've read all of these and I've still got a lot more reading to do. And uh, so it's quite a task. The British Library opens again soon and I'll be able to go and read newspapers. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I just thought I'd uh, give you a little insight into uh, how this kind of thing works show you that I do it properly <laughs> and um, yeah, I will see you soon.